You're watching your turn. If it matters to you, it's important to us. All right. If your child is having behavior problems in school, acts depressed or anxious, or has eccentric behaviors, phobias these days, that can pretty quickly bring a diagnosis and possibly a medical intervention. It wasn't always this way, and plenty of parents say they are grateful now for the modern help for their kids with medication, but it is not without controversy. Many experts are standing up against kids being medicated at younger and younger ages. They believe we don't know the long-term effects on children's brains, and with millions of children being prescribed mood-altering drugs, especially in the United States. There are plenty of opinions about whether or not we are indeed raising Generation RX. What's been your experience? Email us at yourturn at WTVT.com. We're going to read some of your comments on the air today. We have assembled a panel of some of the best-known experts in the field who believe there are safer alternatives to medication. Joining us today, Dr. Peter Bregan, MD. He is the founder of the International Center for the Study of Psychiatry and Psychology. It's IC SPP and author of the book Medication Madness. Bruce Levine, a PhD, is here, clinical psychologist from Cleveland, Ohio, author of Surviving America's Depression Epidemic. Dominic Riccio, PhD, international director of this organization, ICSPP, and psychologist and psychoanalyst. Welcome to the pro program today. And James Gottstein is president of the nonprofit Law Project for Psychiatric Rights in Alaska. Wow, just getting through the introduction, you can see we have quite a, quite a panel here with lots and lots of information. Gentlemen, what percentage of kids in America today do you think are on medication that should not be? All of them. <laughs> All of them. We should not be using. That's a pretty broad Yeah, statement. and that's like 15% probably of our kids or more. Nobody really has an accurate figure. And if you're in a special needs group, it's 100%. Or if you're uh, on foster care, it approaches 100%. Now, the, the answer is not medicating the minds of our children. It's parents learning how to handle difficult problems. It's teachers learning to teach kids who are a little resistant to learning. The power is in the hands of the adults to bring up the children, and we've lost track of that. So does the rest of the panel agree that all children in America should not be on any mood-altering drugs? Do you agree with him? Well, my experience with kids who I've seen over the years, and I've been in private practice almost 25 years, so almost every kid who has come in to see me has been on some kind of prior medication, psychiatric medication we're talking about, Ritalin and Adderall, which is an, am which is an amphetamine, by the way, and all kinds of even more powerful psychiatric medications than that. And almost always these kids that I see, it's, it's either been non-productive or in many cases counterproductive. And counterproductive not just in, a, uh, in, in terms of uh, phys physical adverse effects, counterproductive in the sense of kids losing respect for their parents. Why is that? Because a lot of these kids at some level know that there's nothing essentially wrong with them and that nobody's trying to figure out why they're behaving disruptively. And let's make no mistake, I mean, a lot of these kids are creating enormous amount of havoc. They are creating enormous amount of disruption. We're not saying that there's nothing to be done here with these kids, just leave them alone. But these kids know that they're, at some level there's a real reason for it, and they're hoping a parent or a doctor is going to figure that out instead of just immediately putting them on drugs, which is what happens. Well, you know, I, th I think that most Americans would agree that there is an over-prescribing uh, trend going on here. You know, when you talk about... Uh, how many millions of kids are on some sort of mood altering or psychotropic medication and the fact that if you're in the United States you have three times the chance of being put on something than you do from any European country. I think the U.S. uses five times as much Ritalin for kids as all the other countries combined. But the notion that um, aren't there PET scans and brain scans and MRI that show that there is something biological going on in the minds of some of these children? Absolutely not. It's a complete fraud. Uh, there are no studies uh, that show any kind of brain abnormality in children uh, until they have taken taken these drugs and then once you administer these drugs to children you start to see damage to the brain um, all kinds of uh, cognitive problems and then you also um, see many many physical problems that these drugs cause and there's uh, absolutely uh, I believe absolutely no evidence that these drugs help children in the long run and in fact they really uh, 
hurt pe uh, hurt children's long-term prospects dramatically. Well, so, so, so none of you yeah. think there are any there's any biological basis for any of these for there's bipolar no scientific or, evidence. or OCD or anything like that? There, there is. There's no scientific. There's evidence. no scientific evidence to support that. There are no there are no biological markers. When you have diabetes, you can measure your, your blood sugar and you can say, well, it, 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 we don't have enough insulin and we're not dealing with the sugar in the blood. With all of the mental illnesses that we assign to children. By the way, the labels themselves damage the children. We're basically saying to these children, your brain is defective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are defective. It is a label. And it the is. damage to a developing ego, a de developing sense of self-esteem is immense just in the labeling. That's number one. But what's tantamount to criminality is the fact that we're assigning labels with invalid scientific uh, a basis, evidence, and then we're medicating the brains, the developing brains of these children, which, which are basically toxic chemicals. That's what, what we're doing. What's the youngest children. age that you're seeing children being diagnosed so with? Six months <laughs> yeah. for the for the neuroleptics. Six months. Yes. For like like Risperdal, and Which and would be for, you tell me what, and they, that's for people that are diagnosed with schizophrenia. That's what it's. They're that's what it's. Six month old child has schizophrenia. Old, infants and. Um, you tell me what a, a psychotic six-month-old looks like. We, we used to we had a, a different tantrum? we had a different <laughs> name for it. He's crying, colic, <laughs> right? I mean, you give that you give that per, that that infant uh, Risperdal, and 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 he or she will calm down for sure. Um, You'll but, shut down. Yeah, I mean, it's, so it'll stop crying. It's, it's, and one of the more dreadful things that's coming out of this is that the professionals are disempowering parents. I have parents coming in whose kids are now on five psychiatric mm -hmm, drugs, mm -hmm. and where did it start? It started with he was bored in school, and then he got another drug and another drug and became very disturbed. Or it started out with he was doing back talk. And the professionals are disempowering the parents from believing they can raise their own children, that they can learn better ways to discipline, that they can take a parenting class, that they can get some family counseling. And it's disempowering the teachers. It's making them think they can't possibly interest that little boy in class because mm -hmm. he's got ADHD mm -hmm. rather than you yeah, haven't grabbed his interest or found a way to right. engage him. I mean, I do wonder how many boys, particularly, I've seen a lot of research on boys, have a hard time sitting for hours yeah, in a classroom let's, let's, without being fidgety. And yeah. are they getting diagnosed with ADHD? Yes. yes. One of the things that it's, I think is hard for the general public who've had no experience at all with psychiatrists, psych psychologists to believe, but this is true, is that they'll go, uh, that, that psychologists, like psych Psychiatrists don't understand in many ways, and it's sort of sad, that they're mostly a compliant group of, of kind of people who've done everything right their, their whole lives. They've gotten their A's, they've studied, they've done their homework, and they don't realize that a vast majority of, of kids out there, especially young boys, mm -hmm. don't do everything right. They're right. non-compliant. Right. So, and essentially, a lot of these kids that I've seen over the years, that they, are, they have no illness, they have no disease, they're just non-compliant. You can't fidgety. push them around. They're you can't, fidgety, right. yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break. More on this uh, fascinating conversation about are we using too many meds on kids these days? And is there a long-term effect that we haven't been able to anticipate? We'll be right back.